Welcome friends to another r slash I don't work here lady video. As always, if you enjoy this video, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Our first story of the day is by London Smog Latte. Thank you for getting me free drinks. Context, I work for one of the big pub chains here in the UK. The other day I went out with a few friends to a pub in the same chain as the pub I work at. I was on the way from my table to the bathroom when this woman gets up from her table to intercept me. She tries to push a plate onto me saying, can you take this back and get some new garlic bread? This is overdone and my daughter refuses to eat it. Also, we forgot to order onion rings. Can you go get us some? I take a step back from her and I tell her that, I'm sorry, but I can't help her. She then starts to berate me, complaining about my awful customer service and telling me that she's going to leave a TripAdvisor review to make sure everyone else knows what a useless brat I am, as she tries to push the plate on me again. So I step back again and say, I'm sorry, but I don't work here so I can't help you. It says she looks me up and down, that it dawns on me where the confusion came from. So at this pub, all the staff wear green tartan button-ups that are a green base with a navy gingham pattern. Also, our regional manager decided to get all the staff in our area face masks that are branded with the pub chain logo. I'm wearing a green tartan flannel and my work face mask. Although despite this, it's also fairly clear that I'm not working. For starters, the tartan is a completely different pattern with lines of varying thickness and color. My shirt's undone with only a crop top underneath exposing my midriff. I'm wearing short jean shorts that barely cover my butt and my long hair is down, which is a big no-no in the pub and food industry. She then goes off on me again saying she's tired of my silly games and that she needs to talk to my manager. I told her that I'd go get the manager right away. I know the manager quite well because we used to work together. We both had a good laugh about it before she went over to the table. She was even nice enough to comp my drinks as well for the trouble. Honest question, if you had a job at any kind of a restaurant or maybe even retail, would you on your own time ever actually wear clothing or merch that features the store or restaurant's branding? Or would it not bother you either way? Let me know in the comments down below. This next story is by Comprehensive Tip 202. I'm a passenger lady, now the ticket man. Once I was on a train home from work. I stepped onto the train with my headphones in and not immediately spotting a seat, decided to stand by the train doors. About four stops into my journey, this young lady and her friend got on the train from the other carriage doors. She then proceeded to walk up to me and start talking. I removed my earphone to hear what she was saying. She was asking me for a train ticket to Brighton. I was like, sorry darling, you need to find a train employee, I'm a passenger. This should have been the end of the story, but no, she then proceeded to shove 10 British pounds into my jacket pocket and walked off with her friends saying, well, we'll tell them at the other end that they wouldn't give us a ticket, but they can see from the cameras that we paid them for the trip. I spent the next month standing by those doors every day, but alas, no further luck. I think it's just quite a shame that OP couldn't continue their racket of pretending to be the ticket man, taking those 10 pounds from all the unsuspecting suckers. Our next story is by Dragon Lols. Confused driver is confused. I work as a machinist, so my work clothes are supplied by my employer. I had to make a delivery to one of our customers, which happens to be on the other side of the industrial area. As I arrive to their depot, I start prepping so that forklift operator can quickly take the delivery and I can drive back. Halfway through working, driver joins in. Driver says, is this a dress? I say yes, just go through the door on the side to notify one of the workers. In the meantime, forklift operator finished unloading his last truck and is talking a bit with the driver. As I finish my part of the work, I wave him over. Driver asks, could you sign this paper for me? I say, no, I can't. Driver asks why. I say, I don't work for customer, I work on the other side of the industrial area at employer. The driver says, oh sorry, I thought you worked here, as you were walking in work clothes. I say, from a different company, and I was prepping the truck from the same company. Luckily, we could have a bit of a laugh about it. To be fair, I definitely don't blame the driver. If you show up to some industrial work site where there's multiple operations going on and you see somebody walking around in definitely some kind of construction slash industrial outfit, I myself would absolutely assume that they were working for whatever operation that I'm there for. Our next story is by H. Gilnayer. Maybe I should have your job. This past weekend, I was at the good old blue and yellow mega store. I was in the girls section looking for clothes for my daughter. 
There was an employee with the blue vest standing about five feet from me, folding and organizing clothes. A nice older lady came up to me and asked me where the boy shorts were. I told her I thought it was on the other side of the girl section, but I said I was unsure. I glanced over to the employee for help, but she was conveniently ignoring us. The woman told me she had asked and they took her to the boy's underwear section. I directed the lady in the correct direction, then went back to my shopping. A few minutes later, a couple came up to the employee and asked if they had some item. She looked at them and sighed, then told them she was off the clock and didn't know as she walked away. I was more of a help than the lady wearing the vest and name tag out on the floor was. I'm just really confused because if you're still wearing your vest and your name tag, even if you are on break or off the clock, I feel like the last place you would want to be seen while wearing all that stuff is on the shop floor. And it seemed like they were also working, they were folding and organizing clothes. They probably just didn't want to talk to the people or help them out. This next story is by Surplus32, not so funny mix up with the phone numbers. Remember when smartphones were becoming a thing? My dad intentionally refused to participate in this trend. He kept his old non-smartphone, which malfunctioned after some time. For around two years, my dad didn't have a phone until he decided to give in and buy a smartphone. Now, you know how old phone numbers which are no longer used go back into circulation after some time? Well, apparently, the phone number which my dad received previously belonged to a prostitute. So, what happened is that my dad would receive several messages a day of men asking for specific services. Some of them were very explicit, and the men were describing in detail what they would like to do to that girl, whereas the others were more shy and polite and they would just ask if she's available at 3pm or where they should meet. Most of the customers wouldn't back off after my dad told them they had the wrong number. They would insist that it can't be because... I have this number saved in my phone book. Or, you're just trying to weasel out from meeting with me. There was a guy who somehow got the impression that this lady gave the phone to her pimp. So he would send messages every day to ask, will she be available today? Or, can you put her on the phone? Luckily, for some reason, there weren't many calls, just messages. The really distressing part was that most of these people wouldn't understand what no means. You have to tell them no 10 times before they realize that they're not going to meet up with the prostitute that they wanted. I can't imagine that it's very pleasant for these ladies to meet up with such clients. My dad was furious and he was convinced that it had something to do with the new phone being a smartphone. The messages just wouldn't stop, so he had to get a new number and it was only then when he realized smartphones are not necessarily linked to those kinds of services. Whenever I got a new number, my experience would be receiving an automated text once in a while for like a tutor or a political email asking if some old guy's name was considering voting and stuff like that. You know, innocent stuff. Not like OP's dad. Our next story is by Stagman. Yes, I'm sure I'm not med staff. In late March, I had surgery with an unexpected and serious complication, so I was admitted to a hospital for a week. My insurance company, of course, decided I didn't need a private room, so I was pretty grateful when my roommate with horrific diarrhea was moved on the afternoon of my second day. I spent a lot of the first few days just sleeping, but was woken around 1am by the arrival of my new roommate, who was insistently telling the nurse and CNA that she needed to pee and, no, thank you very much, she didn't want help to the bathroom or a bedside commode, she wanted a catheter, and only a catheter would do. They both left, telling her they'd be right back with the catheter, but she was still yelling, demanding that they come back and cath her. Finally, I spoke up, not knowing why she was there and thinking she was just disoriented. I knew I was. To tell her they weren't in the room, but would return in just a minute. They say, well, can't you just do it then? I say, you mean put a catheter in you? They say, yes, get over here and you can put it in. I say, no, I really can't do that. They say, well, why the heck not? I say, because I'm also a patient, as well as being physically incapable of getting out of bed right now. They say, oh, but are you sure you can't do it? Turns out she was actually drunk, and it was just the beginning of a very long five and a half days. Bless that staff for not succumbing to the urge to kill her, because I'm sure they had it. 
I know I did. Oh, nothing like having to spend over a week in the hospital, and not only that, but for the majority of it be stuck with a drunk Karen. How could it possibly get any better? This next story is by Flashy Cow one Ken, you're asking the wrong department, and I don't work here. Just came from a big orange tools store and was in the tools aisle. Now, there was actual employees in the aisle next to mine helping another customer. Then another man walks up. Let's say he's the male Karen, Ken. Now, this part I didn't see, but the employee claims he tapped her shoulder while she was speaking to the customer she was helping. She tells him she'll get to him in a moment. He gets impatient and huffs and puffs for a minute. I could actually hear him doing this where I was. She unfortunately interrupts the first customer to ask, Ken, what do you need? No, how may I help you, or do you need help? Nope, Ken deservingly got the retail version of Freak Off from her. He then asks her what he needs to make a bell siphon. Now, for those who don't know, this is a plumbing device used to automatically suck water out with no mechanics like pumps when water gets to a certain level. She tells him that she doesn't know and that he needs to go to plumbing. She then turns back to help the first customer. Ken gets mad and says she needs to help him. She turns back around and says, I don't work in the plumbing department. All I know about what you're asking is siphon is something for water. That's plumbing. This is tools. He gets mad and storms off, which is where I now come in. He sees me. I'm wearing nothing that says I work there other than blue jeans. He walks up and says, tell me what I need to make a bell siphon. I would have helped him had he not just demanded that. So I tell him I don't work for the tool store and he needed to go ask the plumbing department employee. He says, I see you all the time in here. You all need to stop lying to your customers. I say okay and go back to what I was looking for in the tools department. He goes over to some other employee and demands to see the manager. The manager comes over and tells him exactly what we both told him. He was asking the wrong department and I didn't work there. The manager did also say he knew how to make it and asked the man for his project measurements so he could get the right sized pipes for him. Ken had to go home and get them because he never bothered to do that before coming to the store for the parts. Ken just sounds like a tornado rolling through wherever, needs a plumbing device, starts asking for help and tools, finally winds up in the right place getting help from the right person, and then doesn't have actually any clue as to what they actually need. I hope they had a pleasant ride back home just to go ahead and measure what they should have already have known. And our final story of the day is by Tipsy Tortuga. I definitely don't look like I work here. This happened a few months ago. I was waiting in line for my first vaccine at a Walgreens. This particular Walgreens was pretty disorganized and we were all waiting in a general area until our name was called. I'm in the area wearing a light winter jacket, mask, Batman pattern by the way, and a hat. Nothing about what I was wearing matched the Walgreens uniforms, nor was I actively perusing the aisles. As I leaned against the wall looking at my phone and waiting my turn, this elderly woman, at least 75, went up to me, stood there and waited till I looked at her and asked, almost shouting, where's the Zycam? It definitely took me by surprise and I just responded with, sorry, I don't work here. She became flustered and wandered in the other direction. Fast forward to after I get the vaccine, I'm waiting in the checkout line with some snacks. She's checking out right in front of me. The cashier asked her if she found everything all right, and she responded with, Yes, someone finally helped me, and they were very nice about it, as she side-eyed me so hard. Apparently, I was just standing in exactly the place someone that is working there should have been, and was misleading her in some way. Not. Well, what the heck, OP? You have the gall to go to a Walgreens and stand exactly where an employee should, and then you have the gall to just stand around and not help this old lady with wherever her Zycam is. Despite the fact that you have no idea probably where anything is in this Walgreens and you don't actually work there, oh, how justified this lady must have felt when she finally reached the checkout line, finally received some help, and was able to deliver that perfect side eye just totally burning a hole through you. 
But with that being said, that's a wrap on another bunch of stories here today. As always, if you guys have any favorite videos of this bunch, let me know which one in the comments down below and why. And if you enjoyed the stories in general, if you could subscribe to this channel, it'd mean a lot to me. I make these videos daily, and it's by far and away the best way to support my channel. So no matter what you did, whether it was subscribing or liking, leaving a comment, I just appreciate the heck out of you guys. And as always, I'll be back tomorrow with even more stories right here on the Storytime channel.